you could be going on YouTube. Um, only got the glaze and the blacks available by the half meter. We had them all cut up and bundled. So that's all we have. Um, now it's telling me we're on YouTube, but I can't see where we are. Oh, there we go. Hello, YouTubers, and, um, and welcome along. And sorry it's taken me so long to get here this morning, if you were waiting. We are live already on Facebook. I've just been running through some of the new um, products that we have for you on the website. Um, we had loads of technical issues, and I've already explained on Facebook, but we had a power cut. We lost the internet completely, so I, I do apologise. I know a lot of you have been waiting, or even got up really in the, early in the morning to join me. Um, so sorry about that, but we are, where are we? 20 minutes late, but we're here now, so that's the main thing. And let me see if I can oh, move you so I can see. Oh, hi, Kim. Oh, lovely, we are on, on YouTube too. Honestly, now then, we brought you some nautical fabrics as well. I am, uh, YouTubers, I'm going to make up the Madison bag in a bit. I just wanted to show you some of the new fabrics that we have on the website, first of all, because we launched um, oh gosh, 10 new bundles yesterday, quite a few, most of them sold out, so I just thought I'd, I'd give you the heads up, because I'm getting into trouble, I'm getting people saying you're always out of stock, the thing is we, we bring you something and you go buying it all the time. Anyway, this is the pale blue option, which is this one, I love this colour, I think it's really elegant. So the I don't know if we've got any of the navy stripe left at all. I don't think so by now, but this is kind of the, the Air Force blue version, if you will. So I'm just moving. Th oh, here we go. I do like to talk to everybody. So um, on YouTube, we have, oh, Pauline, oh, good. Um, and Sheila, let me see if I can move you over onto a screen where I'm not showing you the back of my head when I'm talking to you. Um, hi, dogs and cat mum. Um, rainy and wet, oh dear. Anne's moved over to YouTube, but it, yep, I, we should be on both. I was gonna try and do the website as well, but it just got a bit, a bit bewildering this morning with nothing working. Um, cold in Plymouth. Um, no, my top, I, I wasn't sure about my top this morning. I'm in, I'm in the mood for summer, so I wanted something bright and summery, but I do feel a little bit like, <laughs> I don't, put your sunglasses on, I'm very loud this morning. More than, more than, more than, morning Maureen in Northern Italy. That was condensing all my words into one so that it's um, a little bit more frugal. Um, Jan's making shirts and shorts and morning Francine in Quebec. Hello. Hi Sharon in Cape Town, deliver to the Isle of Man, mm, I, I, don't see, I don't see why not, I shall ask at the post office, it's probably not on there because um, <laughs> uh, it's expensive, but we'll, we'll certainly look into it. So I'm thinking, I'd, oh, I'm, I've, I've, I've still got the sound of waves crashing on the beach, of ahoy there with the little boats. But I'm thinking drawstring bags and beach bags or maybe um, old cushion covers for the caravan or the motorhome would look really nice, wouldn't it? But I love those two colours together. It's, it's kind of the blues and the whites of the nauticals, but very much softer colours. Um, OK, so that's that. And that's that. And then finally, I want to show you these. And this is what I'm actually going to make my Madison bag out of, because I think they're a little bit different. Now, we did have the the pinks available for you as well, but I think those have sold out. Uh, Louise is in Oakthorpe and Gail's in New York and and Myroslava is in Bulgaria. We're all over the place again, aren't we? I'm there on Facebook now, Gail. Uh, good day, Myra in the Philippines. Morning, Kerry. Morning, oh, Myra in, 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 in India. Well, that's a coincidence, isn't it? Both the same name, different countries. Um, oh, I love the shells, though. And I think with the brown works really well, too. Um, we thought about having this put together with like the um, the golds or the, the russets, but when the brown came in next to it like that, it just makes it look so rich. OK, that's all I'm going to show you shop-wise. Um, if you have a look on DebbieShawSewing.com 
and underneath where the videos are um, there's new in new in and back in stock so everything and all your prices and everything will be there then uh, morning Shirley morning Sheila morning heavy heavy not talking properly this morning anyway should we make a bag should we do a bit of sewing so this is the Madison frame we do have it in three colors so I'm using the bronze this morning because I thought it goes really well with the warm colors of my fabric um, hello Jenny in Australia now what I like to do and apologies if you've seen this before um, but it's a sewing frame so it's got holes to go around it and normally you'd put your fabric up inside the frame and sew it in place um, I prefer to glue but I like the look of the stitches so I've already sewn through the holes to make it look as though it's sewn so I'm just going to finish that off because it takes quite a while I find I know it's not the same for everybody um, but when I'm sewing a frame in, I, I'm not very good at hiding the stitches on the inside of the bag. And I do get a little bit impatient. So I'll give you some tips for sewing in, if that's what you prefer to do. But I'm going to actually glue mine in. Um, and you know, to be honest, the only needle I could find that was big enough to take the, the six strands of embroidery thread that I'm using is a doll needle. So that's what I'm using. So I'm literally going in and out. Now there are... The idea with these is that you go uh, that you backstitch, so every hole is filled in. But I like to see, I, I like it to look like stitches, so I'm only doing every other one. Um, so when you get to the end, there will be a spare hole. It, oops, as you see here, because that's where you're supposed to turn around and go back again. But I'm not going to. So I'm literally going in and out of each one of these. So you don't, don't have to use a doll needle for this. I just hadn't got an embroidery needle to hand or a needle with um, an eye big enough for the thread. Whoops. So you will need some strong glue if you're doing it this way as well. And there's only one that I recommend, which is the Gutemann HT2 glue, which we have on the website. But, you know, I don't, I don't want to keep pushing you know, the fact that you have to buy everything from me. You can get it from wherever you like. We just happen to have it if you want it from the website. And I'm showing you how I finished off this bit because this is now quite difficult to knot because it's inside the frame. So I'm not going to. I'm going to chop that off and leave about an inch of it there. And then I'm just going to push this inside. And just drizzle a bit of glue on it hold it in place and that's probably more secure than a knot anyhow um watching in the car can you get the frames without the loops of the chain straps no jen they all come on you could take them off if you don't want them there i would um where are you there you are you can kind of bend that little loop back in fact if you twisted it enough it would break off anyway so if you really don't want those on they sit inside the bag if you don't want to put the handle on it you know, it's not like they, they stand up um but you can break them off if you didn't want them on there morning brenda in kentucky sadie bag frames yes i'm sure we will lizzie i'm sure we'll be getting some more of those in i shall ask my daughter because she's the one in charge um, do I need to work online? Oh, Catherine, I think you're advertising with me. We're not having any of that. Um, Dawn's painting the spare room. Lovely. Morning, Floyd. Now I'm going to I'm going to try and um, be really clever now and see if we can go live on the website at the same time um, because I would kind of like this video to be on there. So let me see if it's it'll work first of all. So bear with me a second while I do my tech bit. Talk amongst yourselves for a minute. What have you been up to? What have you been sewing? Any requests? Anything you're stuck with? Hi Kay in South Dakota. Um, Maya's a fan. Oh, thank you, Maya. It's 4.30 a.m. in Northern California. Gosh, up nice and early. Um, morning greeter in Alicante. Right, wish I could show you what I'm doing here, then I might explain why you're getting the side of my head. So we're going on there, we're doing that, we're sticking that address in there, and then we're going to copy that and go back on there, 
and do that and paste there and create that and then have a look on there and see if we're live. Clever, isn't it? I, I, when technology goes right, I love it. So we'll see if we can actually do the website at the same time. All clever stuff, we might be there in a minute. Um, okay, so let me show you what I'm doing here now. So I've actually stitched all the way around Morning on Debbie Shaw Sewing. Sorry we're late this morning. We've been having lots of technical difficulties. Um, we're making up a Madison bag in this video. Um, so all I've done at the moment, sorry, I'm on the wrong camera. Uh, morning and welcome along if you're on Debbie Shaw Sewing. Um, all I've done at the moment is sew through the holes in the, uh, in the bag frame. Now do remember while we've got the stock of these, that you do get the free pattern included and it explains how to do this as well. That will be emailed to you separately if you're ordering this one, okay? Um, so I'm just gonna put another bit of, bit of glue on the end of that thread there to hold that in place and then we shall get on with sewing some of this back together. So who's been making um, the Madison bags already? I have to say, I've, I've brought you lots of um, bag patterns and bag frames over the years. I love this one more than anything. So you can probably tell because I just keep going back to it over and over again. Uh, lots of different designs and lots of different fabrics. I love it. With this one, I'm going to use Bosal Foam. So it's going to be a really nice sturdy bag. And I'm going to have the shell fabric at the top of my bag and the brown fabric at the bottom. So this is the pattern that I downloaded. That's what that looks like. And it's on the fold so this is going to go on the fold of the fabric now as it's a download um, you need to stick two pieces together because it's on a4 paper um, because most people have an a4 printer so that's the way that it works so let's cut some of this fabric out now when you get your fabric home you're going to be a lot more careful and less wasteful than I'm going to be I'm just trying to be quick so let's cut enough of this and I'm not making the handle to go with this one. Um, on your instructions, you'll have instructions on how to make a fabric handle as well. You will need some um, lobster claw clasps to attach that to the um, frame. The frame. Right. So let's cut a bit across here. I'm going to neaten this with my rotary cutter when I've cut enough fabric down to size and I shall explain why. So that's the bottom of the bag there. So that's all spare. Oh, lining, it's not spare, is it? Um, I'll need two pieces of lining on fold. Oh, I've been a bit excitable about that, haven't I? And I've cut it wrong. I wasn't being very frugal with that at all. I'm gonna have a join in my lining. <laughs> so you'll need two pieces of lining on fold. You should be able to get the whole bag out of, we could do a different colour, couldn't we? I might do blue. You should be able to do a, a whole bag out of two half metres of fabric. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do blue because there's a bit of blue in there anyway. Um, so this is my lining. See it goes. And with it being the lining, I can place on fold both pieces, if that makes sense. So I've got two pieces of fabric placed on fold. So let's pop this on here. We'll have a few pins whoops, stuck in here. Just to hold it down. My, this, these um, are from my website, the frames. If you have a look on debbieshawsewing.com, you'll find them on there. So let's cut around here. Now you can either cut directly onto the pattern like this, or you could draw around it first if you find that easier. And if you're using um, 
more fabric so you'll say so you'll have enough in two half meters to make the bag um, and you will need some kind of um, interfacing whether it's your h640s 30s or foams um, but if you wanted to add pockets to the inside you might have to order a little bit more fabric unless you've got some already uh, but it's plenty big enough if you wanted to add things like um, a patch pocket on each side or zip pockets or whatever you want to make with it just cut that down a little bit straighter on the corner like so okay so that's what we've got for the lining so I can put that to one side for now um, top knot tip <laughs> thank you um, it's a Madison bag I'm making up if you just joined does anybody like Mari um, you haven't missed very much Mari to be honest because I was a bit late coming again because of technical problems again right so now I've got the top fabric and the bottom fabric for the outside of the bag and I'll need to sew these together but as you can see because I cut this with um, scissors um, it's not actually very straight so I need to go back over that with my rotary cutter and make that a straight line so where's my ruler here we go hi Colette in Dublin let's just straighten this off so we've brought you um, loads of times in the past kits with Madison um, but I have been seeing quite a few pictures that you've been sending in um, of different types of fabrics you've been using so I can't find my rotary cutter I have two rotary cutters down here I know my son's pinched one hasn't he right need to have words um, so I'll draw a line and then cut it I remember him saying that she came in last night asking if I had a a small rotary cutter because he'd been using my 60 inch one 60 inch <laughs> 60 centimeter one and it uh, nearly chopped his finger so he wanted a small one so yes forgot about that so we'll just cut it so all I'm doing is cutting the top of the bottom section into a straight line so I don't know if you can see I've actually drawn a line there that I'm cutting along and I'll need to make sure that the top fabric is straight as well because these two are going to be joined together oh I've got my head in the way a bit there haven't I sorry about that Francis I'm, I'm getting to the stage where I'm always late myself at the moment Carol's late as well Julie's in Anglesey. Hi, Lisa. All right, let's chop down here. Difficult to see the lines on dark fabric, isn't it? So I don't really need my cutting mat if I haven't got a, a rotary cutter down here. Let's move that out of the way there. And then I just want to make sure that this fabric is straight as well and that it's the right way around. So let's, is it directional? It's not, it's non-directional, so it doesn't really matter. Um, so that's my straight side there. That looks pretty straight anyway. So I'm going to sew these two pieces together. So let's open this up all the way down. Need a big studio. So I did say in the in the description we're starting from scratch so it might be a long one but I think it's quite nice to see every well apart from sewing the um, um, the thread through the frame which which took quite a while I think it's quite nice to see everything from right from the very start isn't it so I'm using about a half inch seam allowance there because I'm going to press the seam open so I need it to be a decent seam and literally sewing the whole length of the, oh sorry, the whole width of the fabric. Oh, I've got there, sorry, I don't like missing your comments. Um, right, so let's do that. 
and let's see if we can can't block users on there can we can on, on YouTube um, Pauline's off work today to watch the live I know I say it every week but we're getting so busy on these um, Saturday mornings and actually our Wednesday afternoons are getting to be just as busy as well so we've got 564 on Facebook can't see how many on YouTube and you can't tell on on the website doesn't let me know and in fact it's not letting me see comments on the website at the moment um, I don't know why where are we logged in I think so yeah anyway I do go through your comments after so just sewing in straight lines at the moment so nothing too exciting to watch if you wanted to and make yourself a coffee or something while, while you're waiting. All right. And I do like to top stitch. So what I'm going to do after this is to press the seam open. Oh, let me switch the iron on so that's all ready. Um, then I put the foam on the back. Now, I haven't got a hot iron with lots of steam, so I'm going to spray it on. I'd normally iron it and then top stitch so I top stitch through the foam as well because I like the look of that but that's what we're going to do there we are so let's get get the board up and press this seam open now I'm not worried about these being different weights of fabric either so the brown is actually a cotton and this is the canvas but when it's got the the backing on it you're not going to know you're not going to notice the difference so let's in fact we don't need to press that open it just needs to be pressed to be honest so that'll be a little bit quicker let's just go all the way down make sure there's no creases on there so again you will have some left over Oh, Glenish, you're there on the website. I've found you. It's amazing what refreshing can do, isn't it? Have we got anybody else there? Oh, yes, lovely. Now, I've got, I've got three lots of you now. So we're on the website and on Facebook and on YouTube. So I will miss some of your comments. So do apologise in advance if I don't answer everybody. Um... Oh, thank you, Francesca. That's very sweet of you. Oh. 285, 290 on YouTube. Thank you. I can't see that. So thank you for that. Nice to know, isn't it? Um, and there's a thing I love about it. YouTube in particular. I know we get people from all over the place on Facebook, but whenever we go live on YouTube, we, we seem just to be in so many different countries. And it's so lovely of you getting up at stupid o'clock in the morning or staying up late at night to be with us very sweet okay that'll do for now could do with a hot iron with lots of steam but for now that's fine Pop you there and then again we'll cut out the pattern so that's how my bag's going to look I've got the shelves on the top I've got the brown on the bottom and let's fold this in half again in fact we'll do it from the wrong side we'll do, do it properly so if I can cut through four layers if you're using a very heavy fabric um, then what you'll need to do I want to line up this seam here so I know I've got the seam on the same place on both sides like that so if it's not this kind of canvas that you're using or if you've already got your interfacing on your fabric you just see that that's lined up yep you'll take your pattern this is the line that the seam goes over so place it actually over the stitches not over the edge of the fabric and then you can as a pen draw around the pattern then flip it over and then draw around the other side so you've got the complete pattern piece 
with the fabric being a little bit finer like this I should be able to cut both together on the fold like so but again it is important to match up these seams so you've got that seam line in the right place on both pieces so you've got loads left over on this it's because the fabric's so wide um, when this when I designed the pattern I designed it for craft cotton or um, quilting cotton which is 112 centimeters wide so you've got loads left over with this so actually if you did want to make pockets out of the same fabric you've probably got enough in here and handles remember the handles in the pattern as well um, I think I've missed a lot of oh gosh um, I know Sharon there did used to be 60 I remember that we used to get really excited about it I've missed a whole load of your comments I do apologize about that I'll go back later on there's no videos for the sewing room accessories I'm afraid um, I'd love to do a video for every project that I do but the, the videos just take so long um, I've lost YouTube now um, they just take so long to do that I just wouldn't have time to do that um, I'm afraid oh you're up there that's where you are on YouTube you disappeared off the top of the screen for some reason um, so if I'm making so if I was making a video of what we're doing now um, you can see how long it takes to actually do this we're going to be here for about an hour and a half just making it up um, but then on a video I'd be using two cameras and editing the two together so it looks more professional and probably adding graphics to it as well so you've got at least a full day's work to do a video so if I was going to start doing videos for every project in the book when on average there's 20 25 projects I'd need a clone or 10 to be able to um, to film them all so that's why um, okay so I'm just cutting around the edge of the pattern through all four layers if you want to chip in with any questions then I, I know you do but if you're new then do come along and ask the question doesn't matter how how silly you might think it sounds um, it's not a silly question if it's a, a question you could I think put a reset zipper in the organizer bag um, you might be better off looking for a pattern with a, a bag with a reset zipper in it to be honest hello Marie and uh, Maria 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 in Norway right let's put that to one side let's open this out and show you what we've got so that's the front isn't that lovely oh I love this fabric that's the front and the back of the bag you know there's, there's not many things I get excited about in life I'm quite a, a calm person normally but fabrics different kettle of fish and particularly when you find two that go together it's like, oh that works really well I do get excited about fabrics um, okay let's pop this on again and where's my phone down here so I can ask questions and answer them myself as well <laughs> I brought the biggest piece of foam I could possibly find that's something on the floor and oh, let's chop that down a bit <laughs> And again, I don't think my eye in here is quite hot enough to stick the fabric to it. So I think we're gonna have to glue it. We'll have a go, we'll, we'll, we can try, can't we? Right, so this is, um, if you haven't seen it before, this is Bosal single-sided fusible foam. So you iron from the fabric side with the rough side of the foam facing upwards and normally a nice little bit of steam to attach that I haven't got any water in this one so we'll see how we go actually that's sticking quite well um, you could use the sewing foam you could use a fusible fleece like your H640 don't use something too thin though um, because we need quite a thick fabric to push inside the frame to help it stay inside there 
So you can use you know, a, a fine cotton or a quilting cotton or something like that, but just make sure that you've got a nice substantial backing on it. Even if it's you know, like wadding, like quilting wadding, uh, maybe a couple of layers of quilting wadding would work well. So that's one side on, let's cut this out. Yes, you will get wrinkles in it, um, Michelle. Um, it'll be wrinkled when you get it home, it'll be all creased up. So what you need to do, again, if you... <laughs> I'm attached to some green thread, I don't know why or where. How strange. Um, when you get it home, blast of steam from there. Don't touch it, just steam over the wrinkles and the wrinkles will disappear. Um, and it's the same when you're actually putting the fabric on. I know there are different brands of foam. I haven't used all of them. This is Bosal. And um, Bosal likes steam. Some of them don't. And they may go wrinkly. But I don't know because I haven't used them. I know that's the case with some uh, fusible fleeces which are lighter in weight than this one. Some of them can go a little bit wrinkly, which is why I like to use Valiseline because it doesn't, and to be honest, both will do a fusible fleece as well. And that doesn't go wrinkly. That's nice quality too. In my experience. Okay, let's cut around here. Now just remember if you wanted to go for the frame, we've got three colors and you will get your free pattern and instructions. They'll come to you separately because the website isn't set up to add things on like that. Um, so when you place your order within a few hours or so, you should get... Honestly, I'm, I'm tied to some bright green thread for some reason. It's funny, when um, I used to work for um, a shopping channel called Ideal World, going back years here, and uh, I was selling sewing machines. And they have two studios um, with quite a distance in between them and sometimes you'd, you'd have to work from you'd go from one studio to another studio in the break have, have a three minutes break in between each show so I'd finished my sewing show bundled up all my stuff to go on to my next show at the other side of the building and <laughs> I'd got a, a, a bobbin of thread which I didn't realize was unwinding itself on my way as I was running down these corridors and I actually snared myself, I think two directors and about four floor managers, and they're, they're all kind of <laughs> tied up. It was, um, yeah, people dream about things like that. Um, yes, it was rather funny. <laughs> so it just reminded me being tied up for some reason to some bright green thread down here. Um, morning from Connecticut, Cincinnati. Sorry, I saw the sea. Um, that's Carol, hello to you too and he's on the website hi jane hi sophie um glennis i know i've missed lots on the on the website because i'm trying to look at i'm trying to look at three things that now that is multitasking isn't it um oh no you don't you don't have you don't have wheeze in between shows jane <laughs> yeah three three minutes to change sets change studios um i worked once i might, might have so i've got a thread behind there you can see it um, at um, HSN in Florida and uh, they have um, oh their studios are massive They're, it's like a village in fact no it's like a city um, it's huge and um, so their studios if you are going from one to another are quite a long way apart and I found it quite strange I thought it was sad in a way um, I was in the studio and I was waiting for um, the end of my show because you go on you, you wheel on your trolley and your table and you set it all up yourself and you do your 12 minutes of selling and then off you go the, in the opposite direction um, and then wait in the studio till everything's finished so that you can break everything down and I was looking around the studio and there's a wheelchair and I thought I don't see anybody really needs a wheelchair but oh, that's a shame so um, at the end of the show, the wheelchair was actually for the presenter. So the poor dears don't get exhausted running from one studio to another. So when I got back to Ideal World, I suggested this. You know, three minutes to get from one studio to another. We were out of breath by the time we get there. But because of their budget restraints, we couldn't have wheelchairs. We, I was offered a piggyback. 
Better than better than nothing, but not not exactly HSN standard, was it? I was uh, oh hi Patty Michigan. I was um, rather hoping for a moving pavement myself. Could never be a diva. Um, it's you, Alison. It's you. She's got no sound. I think everybody else. I'm going to get lots of messages now saying no sound. Is it? That sounds good. Turn your volume up. Marion's made a grace bag yesterday. Lovely. Morning from Tarpon Springs in Florida. Oh, that sounds lovely. Was your weather like in Florida? But it's warm, isn't it? <laughs> well, it, it's funny having these screens here because I've got YouTube, I've got Facebook, I've got the website, and then I've got an output, like, techie thing. But they're all at different times. And I've just noticed I was, I've just been waving my scissors at you, and I do apologise. How rude. I don't even remember doing that. <gasps> Convent's lovely. Um, web website's a little bit odd for comments because I don't see any, and then like 30 come at once. Roller, oh, could you imagine roller skates? I'd be all over the place. Never was the best roller skater, even when roller skates used to have four wheels on them. <laughs> Oh, hi, Alan in Cleveland in Ohio. Right. Now, this is, I, I hope you don't mind. I just thought we'd start right from scratch. Um, and, you know, we're live on three platforms, so there's no editing anything out. You're getting everything that I'm doing, warts and all. So if I need to change my thread, you can have to bear with me while I change my thread. Um, all I'm doing here, I'm just want to change the top colour because I'm going to top stitch along each side of the... Um, of the seam and I, I want a contrasting colour there, not white. So that's what I'm going to get. Scuba fabric. You can get different weights of scuba fabric, Susan. Um, so yes, some, some of it does drape and some of it can be quite thick. Thank you, Sandra. Okay, come here. There we go. So I'm going to lengthen my stitch up to, this is on three and a half at the moment, and I'm just gonna sew along each side of that seam, just because I think it looks nice. Chile in Spain. So I'm using the edge of my foot as a guide. So I, I, I find that quite easy to sew a straight line then. And as I said before, I like to sew through the bosal. Hi, Sandra and because it's the stitch is sinking i think it looks really nice let's do the same on this side bobbin's outside at the moment i don't know why she doesn't like coming in here anymore bobbin's my dog if if nobody if you weren't aware um but i was saying earlier we've actually got some workmen in at the moment and they're taking out our old boiler that doesn't work it's still freezing in the house um so she's rather excited because she thinks these strangers come to the house purely for her benefit. It's a good job anybody that comes to, oh, we do warn them, but it's a good job they're light dogs. She's very bouncy. So let's do the same on this side. And then I'll change my thread back to white again. That's the only top stitch I'm going to do. What is nice, actually, um, is to quilt, even if you're just doing some straight line quilting. That, oh, that would look nice. I'm not going to do that now, because we will be here all day if I start doing that. Or you could have put some pipe, ooh, some cream coloured pipe could have done that. Piping along the seam would have been nice as well, wouldn't it? Robbie Williams live. Mm. Um, Mary, there will be, a, not till the summer, um, for the outfits, I'm afraid. I need to work on some of those, but I have mentioned before there will be a Maddie book. No, Robin's not appearing in this book, um, but it won't be out till next year, and that will have lots of patterns for different, different outfits in it. Okay, so that's that. I'm glad you're liking the demo on the website, everybody. Glennis. Um. <laughs> that's the thing. Don't you find that big dogs don't realise that they're big? The dog that we had um, previously, you might remember him, Alfie, he was a, um, looked like a Ridgeback, but he was actually a Bull Terrier. 
um, mastiff cross and he, he thought he was small. He was terrified of um, the chihuahua that lived down the road but he'd try and fit in small places and everything about chairs. You may have seen him on YouTube um, but if he was sitting say at the dining table he'd try and sit behind me. This is a dog the size of a donkey. So yeah, but big dogs have like small dog mentalities for some reason. 12 o'clock already, can you hear the church bells chiming? Right, so we have this. So now we can start to piece the whole thing together. Um, so if you're going to put pockets on the lining, then do that now. So I'm not going to with this one because it's just time consuming. Oh, I'm glad you appreciate it, Hazel. The nice thing with doing things like this, I think, if you want to sit and have a chat and you're not doing anything else on a Sunday morning, then Saturday morning, um, then it's, it's just nice to sit and have a, have a natter, isn't it? But if you haven't got time or you don't want to watch me cut things out, then you can always watch it back and fast forward the bits that you don't want to see. So let's do this. A golf, a golf buggy would have been very nice. In fact, any, anything apart from your legs would have been good. Pop that back on again. So I'm just changing over to white because that uh, that russet colour isn't really going to go with the lining. And stitch length. Remember to take that back to two point four. This machine normally works on. Okay. So now we're going to sew these together. So we will need. Let me put this out of the way. One piece of lining. to one outer piece and we're just going to sew around the top this time with a quarter of an inch seam allowance so I know where that is on my machine it's there I am going to length lengthen the stitch a little bit if you've got a walking foot then use it at this point because um, the fabric is very thick. You may find when you're using foams or fleeces like this, um, it seems as though your machine's slowing down a little bit. And it is really because you get a little bit of drag from the foam. So lengthen the stitch, it'll speed it up a bit. But your stitches won't actually be any longer. How do I switch the count? I don't switch it hands free, Sharon. You, I, I do that because I've got um, I've got a switcher down here. So now I wish I could do. If I had a vision mixer, then I wouldn't have to do that at all. So but I'll try and be discreet. Okay, so I do the same around the top of this one. Hi, I tried to do that. So let me have a look. I think um, traces, I go on the three dots, I can't even see any three dots at the moment, three dots, so I can, I can delete the comments but I think I've got to do them individually, I, I can't seem to block actual people, so sorry about that, I said anybody else can. I keep looking out. Um, Dawn, just uh, do you do you use a, a normal needle for the quilted cork fabric? Just a universal needle is fine. Depending on what you're making with it, if you're going to sew that to um, more thick fabric, then a denim needle could help, which is stronger. But I just try it with a universal needle. Don't don't go rushing out and buying anything for for using with cork. Just treat it like fabric. It's not like um, laminated fabric, so you may need something a bit stronger. Don't use a leather needle on laminates or on cork, because leather needles leave a little split in it to allow the thread to go through without um, uh, cutting down on the friction. But they're designed for use with leather because leather will heal over because it's a skin. Um, so I ran out of bobbin thread now. Um, but of course with laminated fabrics and corks it's not a skin it won't heal over so don't uh, don't use that so 
there. Both, yep, both are with a normal foot's fine. Um, it's really easy to sew through, actually. Um, sometimes, if you're making something like a box and you want the corners to be really crisp, you may want to trim back into the seam allowance. But um, I'm not for this one. Just that to bobby and thread. Thanks, Sarah. Don't know why people want to come along and spend hours watching somebody sew if they're not interested in sewing. Right. I'll carry on. Now I'm not going to trim this back. You know, with um, when you sew around curves, you cut into the curve not this time and the reason that you cut into the curves is to cut down on the bulk we don't want to cut down on the bulk we want this to be bulky because the bulkier it is the more um, purchase you get when you force this into the frame fastener no Karen um, the cork fabric's got um, a woven cotton on the back of it so it's it's quite difficult to tear to be honest so yeah put your fastenings on there that's fine um, is it hmm. um, so we've got that so now we're going to sew these two pieces right sides together and this is very much like probably every other bag that I've made. So sew all the way around the edge, not the corners, line up the seams at the side here, leave a gap in the bottom so that we can turn it the right side out. So, And this, this seam here, it's, it's nice to line that up because you will see, you'll see it if it doesn't. You don't notice things when they're, when they're lined up perfectly but they stand out a mile if they're not. Right, so bear with me while I sew lots of straight lines now. We're just going to go all the way around the bag. So again, let's line that up nicely. So we've got any sewing projects going on this weekend. I know Kimberly is making a dress and it's looking amazing. Lindsay, I oh know, you, you should really do your bobbin thread around all of the tensions. Um, but I, I think I'm just so used to doing it that way because that's what my mum used to do. But do make sure that you pull a little bit on the thread to give it some tension when it goes around the bobbin. It's a lot quicker than, than using the preferred method of the manufacturers of your sewing machine. Okay, just making sure those seams are lined up on this side too. Wonky, oh Debbie, if you love wonky cushions, you're going to love next month's Half Yard Members project. Wonky goes 3D. I can't show you yet because it's too early, but I, I love it. I've made two and I absolutely love them. I might do the whole wonky street at some point. Right, so now I'm going around the lining. Oh, thanks, Sam. Yeah, I just thought, you know, we'll, we'll do the whole lot right from scratch. Just so you can see how easy this bag is to actually make. I, I love the style. It's a nice big bag as well. Um, but I think the, the handle makes it look really expensive, and it's really not. Certainly not when you're getting five pounds worth of um, downloads included as well. Right, that's where I'm leaving a gap. No, Leslie, she wants this one back. She uses mine if and when we can get together. Um, but she hasn't got one at home at the moment. <laughs> we do have one at the office, so she's, um, she can busy herself away there with her dressmaking. Whoops, she makes so many dresses. You know, like one a week at the moment. This one's a bit wobbly there, so I'm going back over it again. And back down to the beginning. Oh, I'm glad you like this one, Delia. It's, it's, um, it's really easy. And again, it's a, it's a bit of a, a blank canvas for you because if you wanted to add extra pockets, you can. You don't have to have the two fabrics. I just think it looks really nice. Um, oh, to show you what I'm doing. So that's the cutout corners. I'm going to pull that open from each side like that, squish them together, and then just sew straight across. 
Um, I tend to squish the seams in opposite directions like that as well. Wall hanging and quilting is um, what Mary on YouTube's doing, lovely. Opposite directions, straight across. A pet themed item, Carol wants some time. I'll put some thought into it. I'm not, um, I'm not a fan of dressing up dogs, to be honest. But coats are okay, aren't they? We could do a dog coat sometime. I'll have to figure that one out without a pattern, though. A Dresden Toss pillowcase for Mother's Day. That's a nice idea. Missed a bit there. That's because I'm talking at the same time. Trying to read comments and talking and answering you and sewing on three platforms. I think, Jen, because I, I was having, um, having a clear out, just in case we do get to move house. And I've got so many things. I was saying to Kim, well, I don't know what to do with all of these. And she says, I feel a very big giveaway coming on. So I'm, I'm leaving it up to her. I'm just giving her bags full of stuff as I'm clearing it out and wait to hear what she's got planned with it. Less expensive alternative to both. Um, oh, that wasn't very good. Michelle, I don't know of one. Um, Bosal's the only one that I've used. I think the Lisaline do one. I've died, but I don't know. I haven't used it, so I can't really recommend any other brands. I've got a feeling they're all about the same price, to be honest, but um, you need to have a shop around. Google it. Um, a pet poo bag bag. <laughs> Just check on the web. See, I've got all these comments on the website that I can't keep up with. I shall read them all later on. Samantha's doing the autumn wonky pillows. I love those wonky pillows, don't you? Sam's making baby things out of So Baby Book. And so's dog coats for a greyhound. Oh, that's a nice idea. Um, right, so I've got this. So let's turn it all the right side out. I might have left, a, left that gap a little bit small, but we'll see what we can do. Yes, yeah, what Kimberly makes is her Instagram page. She's uh, the nice, the nice thing is, I know we, you know, we're mother and daughter. We're writing a book together. We work together. We, we uh, joined owners on the business and all of that kind of thing. But we're very different. So whatever Kim makes is what Kim makes. You know, she's. Uh, I don't. I'm not involved in that at all, which I think is quite nice. So I love to see what she's made. You know, I've, a lot of the time, it's not until she puts it on Instagram. I said, like, "I know you were doing that." Um, and we've, we've got very different tastes as well. Kim does a lot of dressmaking. I don't do so much. Um, although I have to admit that uh, the fabrics on the website are all Kim's choice at the moment. Um. <laughs> oh, I know, Gillian. Yeah, no, no excuse for insulation when me, when my boiler's working again. We've been weeks without any heat. We do have hot water in the shower though, so we can still stay clean. Um, but the house, the house is cold anyway. Oh, Mary, oh, is it next week? Oh. Every, um, the last Saturday of the month, if you weren't aware, we do a, a live video, um, for, she's made me a top actually, Sarah, um, on the Half Yard Sewing Club Facebook page. And over the last few months, we've taken to making it a, a, a sew along. Um, and I didn't realize it had come so soon because I haven't even thought about what I'm doing yet. Okay, any ideas what we can do in a sew along that doesn't involve patterns? that we can make in about a week, a week, <laughs> that we could make in about an hour, that people can join in. We've made um, cosmetic bags and um, what else have we done? Was this is a keeper one of those, can't remember. Um, 
tote bags. So yeah, see if you if you think of anything, let me know. Uh, an umbrella cover, that's a thought. Thanks, Christine. So bows or thicker, Decaville light and heavy is thinner. Oh yeah, the Decaville is, uh, I've got some of that down here, is very different. Th this is Decaville. This is the Decaville heavy and it's like, um, it's leather. It feel, it's not leather, it feels like leather. It's that kind, of, like a chamois leather. The shiny side is the adhesive side. So again, you're going to glue that onto the back of your fabric. For this bag, it's, it's a bit thin. It'll give a nice firmness to the actual bag but the top of the bag needs to go into the frame and that doesn't really ha add any weight. You could sew it in, but you'd have a little bit of a gap in there with just two layers of fabric. But I mean, if that's fine with you, then that's fine as well. Um, what you could do is to put some piping cord inside the frame as well, just to kind of jam it in there and, and make it stay. So that's the bag so far. I need to get the top of it under control because it's wanting to bend over at the moment. So I'm going to fold this so that the seams right on the top, and then we'll sew all the way around. Peg bag! Yes! We could do a peg bag. One of the traditional ones that looks like a little apron. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? Okay, peg bag for next week then. <laughs> I'm smiling because I've now got to remember that I've said that. <laughs> Done that a few times, haven't I? Did I say I'd do that? So I'm sewing quite close to the seam and this is purely to give me an, a nice line at the top. So I haven't again snipped into the curve to cut down on bulk, I want the bulk. I think it's nice with the boatsel as well. Um, oh, just to mention, oh, I've got a couple of things to mention actually. Um, the sewing machine canvas that we had on the website yesterday in two colour options in abundance, which sold out in about two hours, um, we will be getting back in stock. So sorry about that if you missed out, but it's, it, it'll probably be next week, but we will be getting that back in stock. The other thing I wanted to mention is a Japanese knot bag on Sewing Street. Um, I designed a bag for them. They print everything. We had a, a bit of a discussion when I first designed it because I said the pattern has got to be printed on A3 paper and they wanted to put it on A4 paper and have you join it together. Um, I have no problem with you joining patterns together that you download, but I think if you're buying a pattern in the post, you shouldn't have to stick it together when you get it home. So I insisted on them being on A3 pieces of paper. So that's what happened the first time we did it. Um, last time I was on Sewing Street, it was actually somebody else was making the bag up, um, but, but still, still got my name on it. And some of the patterns have been going out A4 size, but not to join together. The whole pattern seems to have been shrunken down to an A4 size, so it's far too small. Um, and some patterns haven't been going out at all, apparently. So I've had quite a few messages from people, because uh, obviously people think it's got my name on it. I must be the supplier, so I'm getting the patterns wrong. And I just wanted to explain, not passing the book, but it all comes from Sewing Street. I will be on to them first thing on Monday morning, stamping my feet, which I don't do very often, and complaining about it because apparently, um, well, one, one lady that emailed me this morning said that um, her pattern was sent out in A4 and was told by the call center that she was lucky to get a pattern at all because some people haven't got one at all, which I think is disgraceful. So um, I wanted to apologize to anybody that's bought that pattern and is still trying to figure out how to use it. And just to let you know that I'm hopefully going to be getting things sorted with them on Monday morning. So that's that's not good, is it? Um, no, I don't want you. So I'm getting adverts popping up on Facebook now. And I don't want antivirus there because you're right in front of my screen and I can't see what I'm doing. Um, laundry pace, yeah, peg bag. Oh, right, sorry, talking amongst yourselves. Okay, that's what we've got then. I like it with blue. If I haven't got the blue on its own, you'd have to buy the nautical fabric. But imagine this, in the, um, in the nautical fabric, oh, that would be really nice as well, look. 
with the blue at the bottom. Actually goes with the brown as well, doesn't it? That'd make a really nice bag. Thinking beach bags, not going anywhere. Um, right, let's put this frame in. And I shall give you some hints and tips as well. So if you decide you wanted to sew the frame in, mark the centre here. I'm just doing that with a biro, so not where you can see it. And then put the centre of, so you can count which one of these is in the centre, and push the frame in so that the centre pieces line up there. And then before you start to sew through here, what I would do, so then push that all the way around, um, start in the middle, take your embroidery thread and sew over and over. So if you've got some embroidery thread, you know, some cheap stuff or stuff that you're not gonna use, a color that you don't like, use that, it's a little bit like tacking or basting, and over sew the frame all the way around. That's going to hold it in place before you then start sewing through the holes. When you do, again, start in the middle, um, sew down one side, come back, sew down the other side, come back and then turn over and do the same on that side. Can you see what I'm doing there? <laughs> Um, I'm going to glue, and I like to glue one quarter at a time. So take your frame. Sorry, Pauline, let me do that again. I thought, I thought I'd missed that. I can't see what... Let me, hang on a minute. Let me get me that screen up. That's it. Now I can see what I'm doing. Um, so mark in the centre here. Slip the frame over the top. So that the two se oh that was easier last time um slip the frame over the top of the fabric so that the center pieces line up like so and then over sew so take your needle and thread and go round and round and round and round and round like a tacking stitch to hold all of that in place but start in the middle because if you start at one end and it twists you're going to get the handle going a little bit crooked so line at the center points and wind over and then tie your knot at the back and then you can start sewing through the fabric and through the holes there as well but i'm going to glue this one and then oh sarah a sand pit would be lovely I'm going to drizzle a little bit of glue inside one quarter. So this can be quite runny. So right down to the bottom with it. And I'll go around the corner. If, if it's the first time you've done it, then stop there and just do a little bit at a time. So you need to really take your time with this. If you're using HT2, look, it's dribbling. Always put the lid on straight away, else you just find it sets hard. Now you can leave that for a couple of minutes, or no, say a minute, um, just to make it um, a little bit more tacky. And then we'll put it on. So I'm still lining up the centre points. So that goes in there like that. And then carefully push this inside. So this is why it's easy to do a quarter at a time. Tweezers will help no end. And let's bend this around the corner. Try not to get the glue on your fabric. So it's quite difficult to get off. If it gets on the frame, that's not so bad. Because um, you can scratch it off. Don't scratch it off with your tweezers though, because you don't want to scratch the frame. And then you're just going to very carefully push this inside the frame like so. Oh, popped out again. So in you go, in you go, in you go. In there. Around the corner. And in there. Now, if you, I was saying earlier on about um, if your interfacing isn't as thick as this, if you have some piping cord, I know you can buy special cord for bags like this, um, but just piping cord would be okay, or some very thin string, you're not going to see it. And push that up inside the frame as well, just to give it a little... Oh, it's all, it's all come out now. Right, because normally I'm like this when I do it. So I'll just push it in and then I'll show you what I've done in just a second. So I've got my nose right over the top of here. So in you go, in you go. Make sure those little hooks, if you are going to keep them, are pointing out of the way. 
and then we'll need to leave this for a couple of minutes to make sure it's stuck before we move on otherwise it's going to pop out like that one just did which isn't the end of the world just pop it back in again right but the firmer this can be the stronger that, that seal is going to be no one said this is the easy way of doing it um you've got plenty of wiggle time to do this so no concerns just keep pushing it up inside that's better you'll find your own way of doing it so that's pushed up inside here that's glued that's glued that's glued i'm going to leave that a minute before i go down the sides because that seems to be when it keeps popping out so that's sticking very nicely there I'll read some of your comments while that's gluing a children's coat hanger is that for um oh we've got this on the website yeah um the peg bag i think that's a good idea oh janet see you next week janet see you next saturday um yes pamela it does dry clear i'm using gutterman ht2 glue i find it's the strongest glue for for things like this um i also use it for um if I'm toy making and I've like the doll's hair, um, those are toys that children are going to play with. So I like to put a little dot of glue where the yarn goes into the head. I'll use it if I'm putting buttons on, maybe for, on toys for eyes because I don't want them to come off. I will use this um, when I'm making a bag strap um, or even putting leather buckles and fastenings, you know, like the leather buckles that we do on the website. I'll glue them on first before I actually start to sew because they're not going to move. It makes the whole thing even stronger. Um, but that, I guess the only one that I use, there may be other perfectly good glues out there on the market, but that's, um, that's the one that I like to use. So that's that. Um, what is a peg bag? It's a bag that you put pegs in so that when you go outside, you hang it on the washing line and it keeps all your pegs organised, is what a peg bag is. I'm going to try and go around the other side of this. It's not quite set. But I do want to get this finished. So again, I'm just going into the corners. I've got a little bit of glue on the frame there. Look, so I'm just going to wipe that away. So I've only put the glue up to here at the moment. And let's just ease that in there. And again, tw oh, tweezers really do help to push that inside. I still find this easier than sewing, to be honest. So from this side. So up you go. Up you go. That's it. So as far as it'll go, I'm just trying to make this nice and flat and smooth. It's effective though, isn't it? It does look like it's been sewn in. But again, if you wanted to sew in, that is entirely up to you. However you prefer it. I just find gluing a little bit easier. Probably not um, quicker, to be honest, because you've got to wait for the glue to dry. But I find that you get a neater finish by using the glue personally. I, don't, I think we've got, well, we should have tweezers on the, um, a reusable makeup remover pads with a little bag. Oh, I can't do, I couldn't possibly do that, Alex. I've got a book coming out with some of those in later on. <laughs> right, let's see if we're ready to go around the corners here. Oh, that needs to go in a little bit more there, I think. Again, just make sure that you've got enough glue up inside there. And do leave it longer than this to dry. I'd say, you know, a, a good five minutes before you start moving on to an, the next area. The egg apron. I haven't seen an egg apron, no. I shall have to, I shall have to Google it. So I'm just going around the corner. Let me show you that in a sec. Put your lid on. So I'm now going to bend this around to go into the frame this way I'll glue all over my fingers that's it so you have a poke in there 
in you go that's it there we go a makeup brush roll I don't know if you who would be strong enough for this that's um PVA glue I think isn't it I don't know if it'd be strong enough to stick fabric to metal but if you use it and you say so then that's absolutely why not okay so that's now gone in the side here and nice and tight pushed right in look on both sides like so make sure that's gone all the way in to the corner and then while that's drying let's do this side so into the corner there drizzle it around to the end lid on it's for wearing to collect eggs in <laughs> that's a nice idea and let's push that in there and then we're still going to do the other side so you have to, if I have to bear with me a bit while we do this again if this wasn't live I'd be editing this out and then saying again here it is finished but if you wanted to come back later and fast forward the, the waiting for paint to dry bits or waiting for glue to dry bits then do feel free I won't be offended And you go. Okay. So that's it. Lovely. So that's that. Look, that's all pushed inside there. And that should really wait a little while to dry now. But let's have a go at doing this side again. That will pull out at the moment, so I'm just going to try and do this really carefully. Okay. Lindsay, we do have the bag frames on the website. We should have plenty of them. Um, we've got three colours of them. This is the bronze. There's also a silver and a gunmetal grey. Um, and at the moment, if you order the, uh, the frame, you'll have a free download. It's only the download. I can't send out paper ones. Um, of the pattern and the full instructions as well. I think there's four pages there all together. They're normally five pounds. So you'll have the pattern that you need to join together because it's on A4. Don't remember. Look, there it is. So that's your pattern. And then you'll have your full instructions with photographs as well. Um, the bag, I, I, I can't remember what's actually, what print is on the on the downloadable pattern um, but it will have two parts like this but if you wanted to make it all out of one that's fine um, if you wanted to add zip pockets or patch pockets or anything like that you can do as well on the instructions it'll explain how to make fabric handles too but you will need some hardware to connect them because these have just got little holes in them um, or I tell you what we do have on the website are some chain straps they're quite long, but I quite, I quite like the look. If you've got um, a strap that's too long like that, of just tying a knot in the shoulder thing, that looks quite cool. Um, in which case, you could just put a chain on there and that'd give it a little bit more of, a, of an evening look, I think. So yes, we do have them on the website and we should, we should have lots because we had hundreds of them. Um, oh, Julie, things, we, we say this every week, don't we? Things, things don't... I was going to say they don't usually go right. That doesn't sound very good for somebody that's uh, sitting here trying to teach you how to do something. Um, very often things will go wrong. Um, just happens, doesn't it? Things happen. The thing with sewing, you can unpick it and you can do it again. It's the cutting that goes wrong that can be a problem. So you know that old saying of uh, measure, measure twice, cut once. That is very, very true. But sewing, oh, you can unpick it, don't worry about that. Which sewing foot did you use on your free motion for free motion? That's a free motion foot and a free motion foot. They look different from different manufacturers of your machines, but that's the kind of thing a free motion foot looks like. They've normally got a spring on them like that, and you will need one of those. Um, most sewing machine manufacturers will make them, even if you've got an older sewing machine. These aren't anything new and fancy or anything like that they've been around for a long long time um, probably cost you about 15 pounds if you wanted to buy one of those 
but do make sure that you've got the right foot for your sewing machine so go to your go to your sewing manufacturers first of all um right let's put a bit more glue inside here i'm doing it quarter at a time again just like before if i narrow it goes all the way across the top let's go for it so up to the corners i'm going So with a, a generous splurge of glue in there, lid on. Morning, Sharon. I've got lots of flowers in the house. Um, my husband bought me the tulips the other day. And uh, in fact, the daffodils as well came home the other day, which was really nice. And I just thought I should come and share them with you. Come on, in you go. Right, so make sure that you're lining up the centre with the centre of the frame so that it's not twisted and we'll just push that inside. I'll show you what I'm doing. That's going in there like that. And I'm just going to hold that for a couple of minutes or a couple of seconds. Let's push you right in. This is where your tweezers come in. In you go, that's easier that's in just going to hold it there till it's got a little bit of grip um, do you know Sherry and uh, the things uh, when I first I was saying earlier on about when I was when I was working in shopping Teleland, um, and we were selling sewing machines because that's always been my thing we'd have uh, we had a machine sent back once because the needle had broken and um, I think it was a lady thought that she'd actually broken the sewing machine um, and I'm not saying no that's not something that's gone wrong but that's something where people can help because you know if you it's it's not really a problem what I'm trying to say is it is nice to see things go wrong sometimes isn't it and it's nice to see how to remedy them because it will happen uh, my daughter who's making a dress a day at the moment or so it seems um, was saying to me, she Skyped me this morning, she was saying that I, I can't get the seam to lay flat, what do I need to do? And I said, you've actually sewn the corner together wrong, so it had overlapped in the wrong direction. It's a learning curve and it makes you in a way understand the way that things work when things go wrong. I know I've told you before, but if I take you right back to 1977, um, when I started learning to drive, um, I've always been one of these people who wants to ask the question, how does that work? Why? I must have been a very irritating child. Um, and my driving instructor said, okay, so it's obviously in a manual car. Um, okay, so we're going to come to a stop now. So pull over, put your foot on the clutch and put your foot on the, why do I put my foot on the clutch? Why do I need to do that? And he said, well, don't, don't put your foot on the clutch and see what happens. So as I came to a halt, kangarooing down coal lane, um, that has stuck in my mind for all of those years because that I, I wanted to understand why and the way that it worked and the only way that he could show me why and the way that it worked was to let me get it wrong and you know I, I probably did that a few times since but it, it 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 makes you understand what you're doing right when you get it wrong if that makes sense so getting things wrong is good that's not just making excuses though when I get things wrong I really mean that right I think that's that's held enough um Oh, thank you, Marta. Welcome along today. Nice to have you company. 10 in 77. I was 17 in 77, Sarah. All right, so I'm working for NatWest. Derby Marketplace. Hated it. Right, let's go around here. So one side at a time again. <laughs> I know, no, Gary just buys me flowers. We quite often come back from the shops with a, a lovely bunch of flowers. I love flowers. You see, that's come out too soon. I've, I shouldn't have done that just yet. It hadn't quite dried. We'll shove it back in again. It's not the end of the world, is it? Okay, let's see if I can get this in. I'll try and... I'll try, well, I'm not going to get it finished. You'll have to put it with me all day until this is finished because I'm going to get it finished. Just pushing that back in again and going around that corner. Once you've got the top glued and it's stuck and you've been patient enough to leave it to dry, the rest of it is relatively easy to put together. It just kind of jumps together. So get back in there. And that teaches me to be impatient, doesn't it? 
teaches me not to be impatient, I should say. So I haven't really got any other news to tell you, to be honest. There's not a lot going on, apart from lots and lots of sewing. We did talk the other day about doing an advent calendar, and that's, that's kind of underway. Well, the ideas are anyway, so hopefully that will be sometime in the summer. <laughs> Jenny, were you ever a twinkle, really? You don't look like a twinkle kind of girl to me. Not being rude. I'm being rude, actually. That was rude, wasn't it? Um, <laughs> this is very true, Christine, methinks. I'm ignoring everyone on the website, aren't I? I'm having, I always have problems on the website catching up with comments. It stopped at Glenys, which was 13, 13 minutes ago. Oh, Glenys, thank you. Yes, I missed that one. Right, I'm, I'm waiting for glue to dry, can you tell? Bear with me. Because I'm determined to finish this. So, Wednesday, oh, we, we make something on Wednesday as well. If you want to wear on, um, on the website on Debbie Shaw's Sewing on a Wednesday at 2 o'clock, we're live as well. And more recently, thank you, Anne, uh, a Wonky Street Winter Scene Advent Calendar. That would be nice. Oh. <laughs> 17.77. Forgot what I was saying. Oh, Wednesday afternoon. Uh, Wednesday afternoon at two o'clock on the website live, but we have started broadcasting on Facebook live at the same time. I might give it a try on YouTube as well, since we got there eventually with all of these three platforms we're broadcasting on at the moment. Um, might try that on Wednesday, but we always make something there as well. So do keep your ideas coming through if you think of anything, but it has to be something small and no pattern so that everybody can do it without having to buy or download or anything like that. I'm just putting this final bit in here. So tweezers again, push it in. So apart from the actual cutting out of, why aren't you going in, of the um, paper pattern, that's the only thing I did before, and the being a little bit more patient and waiting for the glue to dry, you could probably make this bag completely from start to finish in about two hours. There, it's in. Nice and tight. This is what I was saying um, about the cord. If this isn't jammed really tight inside here and you've got a little bit of a gap, just take this is too thick <laughs> obviously um, but if you've got some thinner piping cord or a piece of string push it up inside here you could put a little bit of glue on it if you wanted to but push it up inside here so you can't see it and just kind of jam it inside like so late coffee oh thank you everyone's admiring the flowers that you bought me yeah, nice, aren't they? They are lovely, aren't they? I love tulips. Tulips my favourite flower. Tulips first, freesias second. And yellow ones. I don't know why. I just love yellow tulips and yellow freesias. It's quite funny. Well, it wasn't funny at all, actually. Um, my dad's never been, or never was, a fan of flowers. He said they reminded him of funerals. Didn't like candles at all. Funerals. So at his funeral, um, me and my sister both turned up with a bunch of yellow freesias. And we hadn't talked about it or anything. It was just quite strange that we were both the same colour, the same flowers, the same colour, and he didn't like flowers, but there we were. And whenever I see them or smell them, it reminds me of him now. Anyway, that was a bit random, wasn't it? Um, a box pouch, what we could do? A box, so Anne, a box pouch on Wednesday. I'm writing these down because I'll forget. Ooh, I'll be saying, oh gosh, I'll be saying to Kim, what did I say I'd do? Sue wants a box pouch. Wednesday and peg bag for the half yard sewing club and I can't remember whose idea the peg bag was and I'd like to give you a name check. There's no kit Pamela, um, there's the frame and if you buy the frame it comes with a free download for the pattern. 
Um, the fabrics, um, I don't know if you've got any left because I know they're going to be really busy. These are the seashells and brown and it's a fabric bundle that we had, have on the website. That's finished. Now, uh, with my little iron, the prim iron that I've got here, um, I've got no water in it for steam, but the, I shall show you, the bosal, it wrinkled here because I've been turning the whole thing the right side out and I've got a wrinkle there as well. Um, so although I'm not going to actually press this now, if I steam over it with a steam iron, those wrinkles just disappear. It's really simple. And I love the bosal because it's still nice and soft, but it stands up on its own. I think it gives a really nice um, feel to the bag and it kind of stretches the fabric out. It just makes it look really, really expensive. So with the frame, it doesn't actually need a strap. It's, it's lovely like that because it's got the handle integrated into it already. If you wanted to add the strap, remember it's got those two little bits that stick up here. So you can add a chain to it. We've got matching chains on the website if you wanted a chain. Um, or if you've got a lobster claw clasp, which I don't have. I think we've got some silver ones on the website. We don't have any of the bronze ones left. Um, but you can just put a clasp through there and then put a fabric handle on. And just to remind you that the pattern does include a pattern for a handle as well. So you can sew the frame in, you can glue the frame in, you can use the bosal, you can use any other brand of uh, foam for this kind of look if you wanted to. If you wanted um, a softer look, then I'd recommend the H640. It's a bit thicker than H630. So again, it's going to shove up inside that frame and keep it there really well. So I love that fabric, don't you? I'm so in the mood for summer. Got a way to go yet. And at least it's bright and sunny out there at the moment. It is here anyway. Uh, Pascal, oh yeah. I, I didn't realize actually till we came to um, putting the house on the market and the estate agent has for identification. I still got my passport, it's out of date, you know. And Gary's expires this year as well. Mind you, are not going to be using it for a while, are we? So it doesn't really matter. Um, so, oh, I'm glad you like the bag, Poor Seasons. She's got very good taste in fabric, as my daughter Anne. Oh, j'ai de la couleur, j'ai de la couleur. Um, I, oh, I don't, I don't know, Andrew, I don't carry junk. It's really strong. Um, the, the glue, I, I did, I tried to be frugal because um, I brought, I brought these frames a few times before with different types of fabric. Well, it's really well. Oh, cork. Oh, <gasps> be amazing with cork. Anyway, um, with different types of fabrics. And um, I thought I'll reuse, because I'm, I'm not going to use all these bags, but I'll just take the frame out and reuse it. The fabric tore before it actually came out of the frame. Well, I couldn't get it out of the frame. So yes, Angie, it'll cope with all your junk. <laughs> Just put um, a, a link for today's buys. And he had, um, hmm. I'll put a link, uh, there's a, if it's not there already, I'll put a link in the description. But if you go to debbieshawsewing.com, um, the foam is back in stock and the fabric is brand new so it'll be when you go to the website if you haven't been there before um, it'll bring up the um, all of the videos and um, underneath that is things that we have new and next to that are things that are back in stock so the phone's back in stock and the the fabrics new in so it's the it's there what do I do with all iris is that all the bags I make I keep them um, no, Elizabeth, I haven't, I'm not stitching for extra hold. If you're a little bit nervous, then put some stitches in there. That's fine. But that's, that's purely the glue. It's incredibly strong. Um, yeah, the lovely things that I make, I keep most of them. Although, although we're having a clear out, I was saying earlier, and um, Kim has decided that we're going to be doing a big giveaway. I don't know when. Got a lot to sort out. But um, yeah, we'll, we'll give some stuff away. Alison's making a cube. Christine says it's a lovely bag. Thank you very much. Evelyn Pants is a cup of blueberry coffee now. Lovely. Um, Glennis is still here. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I, th I think it's about time we went to Isn't it? It's nearly one o'clock. We've been here for ages today. So I shall see you again on Wednesday at two o'clock in the afternoon on my website on Debbie Shaw Sewing. Um, don't forget if you are ordering anything today or any other day and you're a member of the Half Yard Sewing Club, 
don't forget to use your code for your 10% discount. Um, if you can't make Wednesday at two o'clock, I shall see you again here next Saturday where we're going to make a peg, but oh, it's not here, no. Uh, it'll be here on YouTube, um, but we will be on the Half Yard Sewing Club um, Facebook page next Saturday because it's the last one in the month. Uh, put a couple of pennies in the water for you to... Oh, really? Has to have chip off her flowers when she lives in the hotel. Keeps from well, that's a good idea because they're only a few days old and they're kind of wilting already. Somebody suggested putting pins in them. Never thought about that. Uh, good night, Eleanor. Thanks for waiting up with us. Kate's off to do some sewing. That's okay, Kim. Thank you. See you next Wednesday, Anne. Angie, see you next week. Thank you. See you next week, Nan. See you next week, Linda. She's got a cold cup of tea. I've got a cold cup of coffee here, but I've got another one now. Um, right, I'm going to get off now to do some more sewing. I shall see you again on Wednesday. Do take care. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, and I shall see you very soon. Thank you so much for joining me today. Bye-bye. <laughs>